Hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video on how to use XY plots or formerly known as scatter plots. So here I have some data uh, from a cooling tower and I want to compare them in a different domain than just a time domain. So in order to switch to XY mode, just come up here and select XY plot. So now you can see those signals are going to be represented as X and Y. Now you can select or change which signal is on the X or the Y axis by either coming up here and selecting which goes where. You can also switch which signals on the X or Y. And then lastly, if you come to the bottom in your details pane, you can also control which signal goes where. When it comes to how you might want to color your display, there is a slider here at the bottom that allows you to slide into different periods of time. You'll also see a spark line of the trend items. So if you just want to zero in on a specific period of time in terms of color, you can do that. But there are more coloring options as well that you can access through the color modal. So in this case, for instance, if I wanted to change to a specific time and show that in a specific color, can do that right here through the modal. And you can see here as we close this out, now my color is dependent on that time period. We also have other ways of coloring. So we can just color by the item in a details pane. So in that case, that's what's in that little square right there next to the signal. And lastly, we can also color by a different signal. So if I wanted to, for instance, take my wet bulb temperature and add additional depth based on the value of my wet bulb temperature, I can do that through this modal as well. So let's go ahead and switch back to coloring by the color in the details pane. Now you will notice that there's also abilities to color by conditions and properties. So for instance, here's my compressor online condition. And if I select that, now my XY plot will show up based on whenever that compressor online condition is true or active. Now notice when I created this condition, I also added a special property called operation based on another signal. So you can do that uh, via the set property function. And in XY plot, you can access uh, that information now as well. So if I select that property for operation in this case, and I close that out, now my coloring will be based on whenever uh, a capsule contains that particular property. So the different phases of operation. So lots of options on how to color things. Let me go ahead and remove the property now and show you one last little trick. So I'll close this out here. So if you're in a situation like this, you can also highlight certain capsules. So you can see my capsules pane here contains uh, various periods of interest. And by selecting or deselecting those, you can highlight that trend. You also have your filtering capability there. So if I filter, for instance, by just phase one, and I could select those capsules and highlight those specific modes of operation as well. Go ahead and remove that. Remove my filter. Now, in some cases, you might have more than one signal you want to plot on the y-axis. And so you can do that just here in the details pane. As an example, if I wanted to add my wet bulb temperature to the same XY plot, uh, you can just do that right down in the details pane, and you could also do it at the modal up top. Uh, same for removing and adding. You do also have control over the color of the items displayed on the Y axis. So if you wanted to change, for instance, the wet bulb temperature, you can do that through the details pane and the color selector. The last thing to demonstrate on this worksheet is you might be interested in a certain region. So I'm highlighting a region here. And with a click of a button, you can actually create a condition, a C condition, that then can be used uh, throughout the system. So I've got interesting behavior there, maybe where these two items overlap. And this will now create a condition that's representative of that region on the XY plot. And because this is a seek item, I can come to my trend view and go ahead and leverage, for instance, chain view to only show those periods of interest. So my interesting behavior here, and with a click of a button, I've now narrowed in on that in a trend view. All right, so let's talk a little bit about 
fitting lines to XY plots. I'm going to navigate to this new worksheet, and here I have some temperature and relative humidity data. And I'm going to add a trend line by clicking this F of X button. Notice I can select a signal from the detail panel. In this case, I don't have any trends set up. So I'm going to go ahead and create a prediction using our prediction tool. So click on this link here. Notice we are now in model and predict. I'm going to give this a name just like we would any other item in seek. So the, maybe the relative humidity is a function of uh, temperature. And my signal to model will be my humidity. My input signal will be temperature. I can create different models. So log, polynomial, linear, whatever I'd like. And notice if you expand this prediction model here, the coefficients will change to match the data. So let's start with just a linear model. I'm going to go ahead and execute this. And notice now SQL fit a line to those data in that particular display range. Also, it's created a new item. So again, we can use this throughout Seek. So if I come back here through my f of x, you can see that that's been added. If I want to remove that line, I can just exit out. And conversely, if I want to add it back to it, it's going to now be available as an item to select. If I close this out, it's now going to get added back to the xy plot. Because this is a prediction, I can also change it. So if I wanted to maybe make it a polynomial fit, I can do that to adjust the model, execute that, and then the line will adjust to fit that new regression. If the shape of the trend line is already known, so in other words, you don't want to create a, a regression or a prediction, we can also do that by a formula. A classic example of that is something like a pump curve. So here I have a formula uh, that's representative of a pump curve, and I want to plot my data against that. So in order to do that, uh, it's the same approach. We're going to come up here to the add or remove trend line. But in this case, we're going to create a formula instead. Uh, this will bring up our formula modal. And so for this demo here, I've already got my formula written out. So I'm just going to copy this and move it into my formula modal. I'm going to give it a name. So again, that's going to be a new seek item. So I'll just call this pump curve for now. And I'm going to go ahead and execute that. And that's going to create a new seek item. And then I just have to add that to my XY plot. Here. Go ahead and close this. And notice now I'm plotting my data against a pump curve. Now, this capability is not limited to a single curve. So, in some cases, we might have multiple curves. Let's switch here. This is an example of a compressor. And in this case, I might have multiple speed curves and maybe a surge line and some other things. So, as long as I can express these in a formula, we can also add these to the XY plot in the same fashion. So I'll come up here to my add trend line and I've already pre-configured these and I can just add these to my trend here or to my display. And so in this case, I can show a compressor map. Now to close the loop, I might also have a condition that indicates when I'm operating in a certain range. Uh, let me just change the color here. So this would be a condition based on speed that um, allows me to color the data when I'm in that particular range. And so if I color based on condition in this case, I can actually highlight when I'm running in that region. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us.